Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Today I'm going to be talking about plumbing and I'm going to go over all the different items I've uh, purchased and installed here. Uh, I'm doing a renovation uh, pretty much from scratch where I uh, started with the bare walls and uh, I changed out some plumbing, some old cast iron plumbing. And you see this piece right here, changed that out. Changed out the old T before we put in the cabinets. After we took out the old cabinets, we changed out the uh, cast iron pipes back behind the wall. That's a very important uh, thing to do uh, because look at that crack. Now that crack was not visible as the crack was facing the outside of the house. This is a Kohler faucet and it's a, a pull down model. And I really like these because they have excellent customer service and they're good heavy duty faucets. It was about 200 bucks. And then I have a Kohler strainer here. Uh, believe it or not, it's about 60 bucks. Uh, it's very heavy duty. See, it says Kohler. Right there, it says Kohler. And the sink is also Kohler right here. It's a nine inch deep stainless steel sink. And it was about 200 bucks. So we got 200 bucks. We got 60 bucks. We got 200 bucks for the sink. And then this is just a Danco. Uh, air gap. I couldn't see paying an extra 10 bucks to get a Kohler air gap. It's just it's a non-moving part. Uh, anyway, you get you get them in chrome or whatever uh, finish you need for your project. An air gap creates separation between your water supply from the city and possibly contaminated water coming from your dishwasher. It is code in most areas to use an air gap and an air gap creates better water flow. And let's take a look at the plumbing underneath the sink. This, this white line right here is your discharge from the dishwasher and it goes up to the air gap here. That's the straight portion of the air gap. So it goes right in there and then out of the air gap comes this black line here which is not very flexible. It's uh, quite stiff. And the way to work with it is uh, let it set out in the sun for a while, if you can, and uh, soak it in hot water for about 10 minutes before you use it. Then you can make these turns. Otherwise, you're really going to be struggling. This flexible pipe must always go downhill. Otherwise, it could possibly cause a clog. And here we have the junction uh, for the sink and the garbage disposal. You see it's got uh, three screws that you screw up. And um, you see the uh, plumber's putty oozing out there. Uh, that's the way it should be. And then, okay, from this portion that comes from the air gap to the disposal, it comes out here with an elbow to uh, the one and a half inch PVC elbow. And that uh, comes over here. There is a baffle right here that keeps it from going all the way across. There's a baffle in this T and it comes down to the P-trap and then that goes through this straight pipe, which actually you need to angle it down. You need to angle it down this way a little bit. Not too much because this fitting won't go right, but I have this going downhill a little bit. And then uh, back in the back here, I have ABS. You might have PVC. Uh, depending on where you live in California, we use ABS. And up here, we have the uh, Kohler strainer. It's got three screws that tighten it down very well. It's a quite a high quality strainer. And we come down here with a straight pipe and then an elbow. And then it goes to the T and then it goes to the P-trap and it goes to the straight pipe and to the ABS behind the wall and then to the sewer system. And then under here, we have your electrical and in this case, it goes to this receptacle back here. And the garbage disposal comes with this tool right here. This is a hex head tool. And it goes in the middle like this. And when you have a clog, you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it unclogs. So keep track of this tool. It's an important tool. So the supply line is the silver colored line there. And it goes to the hot water valve. And the faucet also goes to the hot water valve. So there's two outlets for this valve right here, and they're both 3 8 Now, when you redo your plumbing, you have to figure out what angle you want your piping to come out from the wall. 
you want it to come out not straight to your T right here. You want it to come out to the side a little bit. If you went straight into the T, you would have a problem uh, fitting the P-trap to it. So you want to come out a little off-center uh, from the middle. This is an Insincorator Badger 900-3. It's three-quarters horse, but they say that these models have a lot more power than their previous three-quarter horse power Insincorators. It's bigger than the previous ones. The right side valve here accepts the cold water from the Kohler faucet, that's 3 eighths of an inch, and then the other one is an ice maker, and that goes to the refrigerator, and uh, that's a quarter of an inch. Then last but not least, I want to show you this mat I got to go underneath the sink here. It's called an under the sink mat, and I paid 25 bucks for it on Amazon. Um, it's supposed to hold three gallons of water. It might save you. And the other thing I did, I have underneath here, I have a 4x4 pressure treated. And then on top of that, I got a 2x4 pressure treated, then a little bit of plywood. And I got two rows of that supporting this here. So if you get some plumber, you know, 250 pound plumber, you know, getting up here, you don't put a bunch of weight on it, or if it gets wet or whatever, it is supported. You see, that, that's a good tip to support your under the sink wood and also uh, these cabinets are um, plywood. They're not particle board. That's another good tip. You know, get plywood even if you get the RTA like I did. Another great product that has really come in handy are these Klein kneeling pads. I have both the bigger one and the smaller one. I'll put links in my video description for all the products and tools you saw in the video. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.